Thank you guys for joining us for episode 56 of Black Coffee and Crime. This is going to be our last episode of the year. Um, there is one more additional week um, in December in 2021, but we're just going to skip right over that. It's right after the holidays. And, you know, we're probably going to be hung over um, from either drink, eggnog, food, relatives. It's just too much. So we are going to skip over that and then we'll start back with you all in the new year. So, um, yeah, I think our first show will be like a couple of days after the new year. So we even though we're hung up from that, you don't see the results of that. Um, so, thank you. <laughs> so thank you all. This is, you know, basically... Um, since it's our last show, we're just going to talk about 2021. These are our favorite stories that we've talked about this year, things we'll talk about next year, or just in general, all the messiness that has happened in 2021. Um, so thank everyone for joining us. Um, right now, um, last I checked, we have 257 subscribers on YouTube. Um, I know it's seemed low, but no. You know, it's, it's grown, steadily grows every week. Uh, lots of new uh, followers on Facebook and Instagram. So again, we always thank you guys for that. So even if I found that a lot of people who watch the show aren't even subscribed to YouTube, they just know when we post it to go and watch the show and they watch the show and they tell me like, I watched the show, but I'm like, but you're not a subscriber, but either way, we appreciate it. Um, YouTube sent me sent us rather the year in kind of this is what happened to you guys in 2021. Um, so this is a part of our church announcements and they are as follows. Mm -hmm. um, 66,000, uh, 66.7 thousand um, minutes of shows were watched. And uh, we have 15,000 total views um, in 2021. Um, Top three countries that watch our show, the United States, the United Kingdom, and Canada. So we thank our uh, cousins to the north and well, our former relatives three times removed <laughs> across the Atlantic. So uh, we thank you guys um, as well. We have some people from Ireland um, who watch. I'm not sure if that is the Republic of Ireland or just, you know, Northern Ireland. But in either way, um, we appreciate it because... Northern Ireland is not part of the UK. I believe it goes that way. One of them, I believe it's Northern Ireland. But sorry, if I messed that up, I'm sorry. You know, charge it to the game. So we do thank you for all the views, all the minutes that you've watched, even for those of you who skipped through half of the show to get to the meat of it. We appreciate that because that added to the total. Um, and that's fine. We generally tell you skip about 30, 40 minutes in and you'll get to the meat of the story. Um, so we really appreciate that. So we did very well in 2021 and we'll continue. Um, I do have to address a question I got on Facebook that said um, in the coming year of the show, will we address cold cases and try to find, try to solve cold, cold cases and um, provide some healing to, you know, the families? Um, my answer to that was this we don't have the time nor the resources to actually solve a cold case. Yeah. We just don't. Uh, however, we will talk about cold cases, but one thing that we do need is suggestions from those subscribers um, and our followers on Facebook and uh, Instagram. We always ask for that. Tell us what you want to hear about. Is there something in your hometown or, you know, whatever, tell us, because we're always looking for, new stories to talk about cold cases, things that no one knows about. So send those to us and we'll definitely uh, try to find as much information as possible so that we can talk about those things. So that was the answer to my question. So if there's a case in your hometown or something you want us to find out, talk about, send it to us. Uh, info at blackcoffee.com, blackcoffeecrime.com, sorry. Or you can go to Facebook and Instagram at blackcoffeecrime. Um, just DM or just put in general questions or comments or comment on any of the videos on YouTube. All right. Uh, any other church announcements? Um, prayers for the new year. Uh, thank the Lord I made it through this year. All of that. Um, I think that's the prayer of a lot of folks. That they made it through 2021? 
because folks was thinking, you know, 2020 was rough. It was rough. But 2021 was rough, too. 2021 said, hold on, hold my beer. I'm not done. I mean, um, it's, yeah. This was like the sophomore year. Internal stuff, political stuff, um, trials that were going on. Yeah. Foolishness. Um, this This is the year of the gorilla glue lady, so... Yeah, and um, I think that we really saw the impact of the pandemic on more it um, the impact of the the pandemic in terms of social issues mm-hmm. and uh, mental health. I mean, in 2020, we mm-hmm. were just looking at the sheer numbers of deaths and people who had contracted the vi- the virus, but in 2021, it really started to mess with people's mental. And um, I think gave people an opportunity to address mental and, and issues that they had previously, because now you're alone. You have you have all the alone time in the world. You can no longer run from yourself in 2021. I think that was, this was the year of confrontation, uh, personal confrontation. You can't run from yourself. Mm-hmm. You're, you know, you're going to find out who you are, what you can do, um, all of that, your limitations and all of that in this year. So. It was a rough one. So um, thank God we made it over. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh mm. oh Come on now. Come mm-hmm. on now. Mm-hmm. Never get away with that. Yeah. You never get away with that. No. You doesn't. never get away with that. You just got away with that. That's amazing. You yeah. know, you know the so Lord she would have froze and been like, You know, because that power of the pen, you know, I'll still be like, I'm editing that out. Like, we're not going with that, you know. But the Lord put it on I got that thing to Brandy earlier today, uh, a favorite of mine in, in, in differing keys. And um, she, loved she loved it. Sing the song, Brandy. Tell the song that she was singing. Tell the song that she was singing. That's between us. <laughs> okay. She, she ad lived a go old hymn. She mm. ad libbed the hymn, and the and the, 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 she ain't taking me down for the ad lib that she did. No, she ain't gonna do it. I ain't gonna let her do it. Ain't All I was saying is, I woke up this morning with my eye stayed on Jesus. I didn't say mine. I said my eye stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> And Jackie, you could just imagine of why she changed the lyrics to that song. <laughs> um, but yeah, you ain't gonna take me down. All right. So um, again, thank God we made it over in prayers and blessings to those going into 2022. Um, we wish everybody success. We want success for ourselves. Um, so we're gonna go with that. Those are the announcements as follows. Please govern yourselves accordingly. All right, so let's just start with the very first thing that happened in 2021. Before Biden could even take office, we had an insurrection. He hadn't even put his welcome mat down. Cito was still in office. His vice president was presiding over the Senate on January 6th. You had these people stage an insurrection when your vice president was at work. These people were going into offices and, 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 and um, opening doors in the Senate building that no one knew about. The public does not see these offices. The public doesn't know where the congresswomen and the congressmen have their offices in the lower floors. And they were all over the place. But, you know, right now, you know, you've seen the first couple of people get sentenced to like three, four years or whatever prison. But now they're coming after the big dogs. Now they're going after the congressmen and the Senate senators who um, knew about this and who pushed it and condoned it and the emails 
y'all y'all talked about Hillary with them emails, mm-hmm. but all these emails are coming out, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a shit show. It is gonna be a shit show. So a whole insurrection in the United States Senate. Um, couple of uh, what Capitol police officers died. Um, it was just it was just sad to watch. It was sad. Yeah, and one that sad. died due to the actual insurrection and I think other ones that committed suicide due to well there were some officers who committed suicide um some of them from the trauma of the event and then some of them because they were in on it some of those officers were in on it because as we were watching the insurrection on tv from multiple um uh, outlets, you could see that the pol- the Capitol Police weren't, there were no, where were the snipers? Where was the military presence? But guess what? Trump had told them to stand down. Told, told them to stand down and allow all of this to happen. <clears throat> and I just, you know, they're saying they're doing this in the name of patriotism. You cannot be a patriot if you're storming you're staging an insurrection because someone lost a fair and democratic mm-hmm. election. Right? They don't think it was a fair election. That's the thing. It definitely was. They put that in people's heads early on that if I don't win, then it's uh, you know, some some it was it wasn't legit like it wasn't they cheated. like i don't win they cheated yeah well even in the recounts even the recounts that they demanded they were actually finding more votes for for biden when they recounted <laughs> so biden got even though he won he got shortchanged because when they did the recounts and the audits his margin increased um and so what trump did throughout the entirety of his four years in office is he created this catch 22 type situation to where he talked about the media and the media is going to do this, 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 and this. And when the media did that reporting the news, it's fake news. They did the, Oh, it's fake news. They're coming after me. They're lying. So everything that the media did providing information now it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. And now you got these yahoos who don't believe it. Um, Jackie, you live here in the DFW with me. Um, and a lot of people didn't know this because they really weren't reporting on this a lot. Was these oh, dumbasses. I why? I don't know. I don't Those know. Are- because a lot of people in Dallas didn't even know that this was happening. Those dumbasses who were down at Dealey Plaza two two months ago talking about JFK Jr. was going to appear Mm -hmm. and help Trump retake the White House. A couple Mm -hmm. things wrong here. JFK Jr. died in what, 90 something? (laughs) In Cape Slow. In the Atlantic? He he died in a plane crash over the Atlantic. Well, his dad his daddy was gonna come back too. Right. His daddy was a Democrat though, so I don't know how that worked. Junior. But they were gonna help and listen. I had heard about it and I heard people were gonna do this, but I'm like, surely. This is not going to happen. No, they did it. This is not going to happen. You know what? It was over a thousand something people. Yes. Mm -hmm. They were out there. It was cold as hell. It was raining. Um, I saw this guy on TikTok. I guess he worked downtown and he was out there and he's like, you know, he shows the people. They're right around the grassy knoll on both sides of the street, right in front of the Sixth Floor Museum in Indigo Plaza. And they are waiting. So are they are they looking up? They were they like looking at the because if you've never been to Dallas, right at the spot where the shot happened, where the car mm-hmm. passes an X in the middle of the street to mark basically to mark the spot. So they're looking at the X. Was the car just like doing a quantum appear? 
it was going to appear just, you know, just. Or was it going to come down Elm Street? Like, you're going to look down Elm Street and it was just going to kind of ghost in. Like, I don't understand. Um, no, just gonna, you, they were going to blink and it was going to be there. It was amazing. And then um, <laughs> they were going. My coworkers, uh, they were like, they went to lunch. I worked late shift. So my coworkers on second shift, they said they're like, they went to lunch and the people were everywhere. They were down there. They were just, they were just all over downtown. Um, I go into work at, I hit downtown around a quarter to 10. And I'm looking everywhere because I knew that they were down there. There was a few people out there still at 10 o'clock at night. Well, there were people who stayed days afterwards because yeah. the, the guy, mm -hmm. whoever is their leader, said, you know, he, they were still waiting on him. Like a, like, a, you know, like a, like the core members. Like it was like a heaven's gate type thing. Like, you know, we're waiting for the rapture. We're waiting for this to happen. And if it doesn't happen today, our leader said, you know what? They got delayed. It's going to happen tomorrow. Um, there are still people. Um, I leave downtown like six, set between like 6.30 in the morning. Um, there's still people who are out there at six o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning. You can't tell me you're a tourist at the sixth floor museum at 6.30 in the morning because it don't open until like nine o'clock. I think that if somebody was going to come back the Lord would have alerted more than one person. He would have alerted a few folks uh, so that he could be like, yeah, this is happening. He ain't going to tell one Joe Blow that somebody's just going to come back. To life. I don't think it has anything to do with the Lord. Well, just, um, it's just insane that you would even think that um, that someone that doesn't exist that's no longer here would come back and um, help Trump. Just for the purposes. I mean, it, it's just so bizarre. It's so bizarre. Like it's just, bizarre they that they believe this. this. Yes, that's, that's that's the crazy part. Like, they actually they believe. believe the Lord, because these, these are Republican folks. You know, Bible Belt folks. You know, at some point, I don't really even think that Evangelical. We're talking about actual Republicans anymore. They're QAnons. Right. We're not talking about actual Republicans anymore because as a group, in and of itself, there's nothing wrong with the Republican, Republican Party because it's all ideology. It's all uh, political talking points. And not all of them are wrong. You just, it's just whatever you agree with most. Because a lot of mm -hmm. the things that that, re, that make up the Republican idea, ideal is they make sense. Yeah. They make sense. But we're, we're talking, you're talking about the Republican of old. I'm talking about Trump Republicans. I, I don't even think they're Republican. I think I just think these are bigoted ass people who don't have really an affiliation politically. They are just. Uh, I think they are Trump Republicans who got mixed into QAnon and then went a little further into something else that don't make sense. I mean, I'm all I'm all in for a conspiracy theory. Trust me. Uh, trust me. I'm all in for a conspiracy theory because I have a mistrust of history books. I always mm -hmm. have. I got kicked out of my eighth grade history class. The, my teacher would not allow me to sit in her class. She set my desk outside every single day because I questioned her every day. How do you get little and learn you sitting outside? Because I didn't want to learn. Because I kept asking her stuff. Like, you know, she's telling me what's happening. Excuse me. Around the door. Excuse me. Right. She's asking what's happening. That doesn't, that doesn't, make, that doesn't make sense. Because it ain't going to be that hot. You know she's going to keep it. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. How's that, how did that happen? And that's because exactly why she kicked me out of her class. That doesn't make sense. How you don't know about some, There's some no way that could have happened if this happened. That, that right. She's happen. telling some stuff and it's all linear. And I was like, okay, but what about this happened at the same time? 
Well, that's not in the book, right? But I'm just saying, if you're going to talk about it, let's talk about it. And I had two friends in that class, Zach and Brandon. And they had their, they moved their desk close to the door so I could talk to them. So they would ask questions for me. And because they were white, uh, they kind of got away with it. Zach was like this rocker kid with this really long hair. And he had this brush. And he was always brushing his hair. And Brandon was like goth before goth was goth. Okay. And all emo and all that. So he got, you know, he was real existential. He read the books. And so I don't know how they were friends. And then I don't know how I was friends with him. I don't know. But they sat by the door. So they were like my, you know, my conduits to get on this woman's nerves. But said all that to say that I'm distrustful. So I like a good conspiracy theory. But this QAnon stuff. This is different. This is scary conspiracy theory. Mm -hmm. These people are drinking, literally drinking the Kool-Aid. They are drinking pork. Poison, taking horse medicine, um, but they're also saying at the same time that the COVID vaccine is poison. What did you just drink, though? <laughs> but I don't understand. What did you just drink? I don't trust what the CDC says, but you always have. So taking all taking up all the lupus medication when they was taking that Plaquenil. Was that the hydrochlor something, hydrochlorine or something like that? The, the stuff they put in the fish tanks. Um, this is really scary. So all of that, and you know, all of this is QAnon from the insurrection to them uh, waiting for JFK to reappear in Dallas. Um, there, was a, there was a man, uh, I think died this week or last week his wife went to court for the doctors to give him ivermectin because they were like we're not going to give him that and she won and so she had a private doctor come in to give it to him and he yeah. got two doses and he started going down and then he eventually died but then i'm looking at the comments and they're like well if they had given him ivermectin earlier he would have been okay but i'm like he got two shots of it and he went down. He died. Like he got the shots, whether if whether he was bad off already or not, if that's the drug that brings you from the dead, if that's the Lazarus effect drug, it shouldn't matter what what uh stage of uh COVID you're in if this is the if this is the pill. Mm -hmm. And that's what I don't understand. It's like, oh, nothing that happens with these people is is wrong. Um, they are like it either it either proves the theory or disproves. You know what I'm saying? Everything proves the theory. If it works, okay, then they were right. If it doesn't work, they were still right because you didn't give it to them in time, or you know, uh, it wasn't available. The wormer. Basically, you're just going to have the shits. Horse shits. Not even I mean, how much shit. Are they giving up the same amount that the horse gets? Like, I don't know. Who do you go to to get the, a vet, the veterinarian? Or is there doctors out here? They, no, they were really? going to tractor supply. Because it's readily available at like tra tra what was um, at tractor supply because it's just, you know, like going to Petco for a dog deworm or whatever, but now you got to get it for a horse. And now poor horses are out there with a gut full of worms because y'all want to take this bullshit. Like if you don't want to take the vaccine for whatever reason, don't take the vaccine. Just, you know, uh, just play Russian roulette and let your own immune system fight this off. I'm just wondering, how do you know how much to take? The worm like a pill. Depending on the severity, your size, your weight, your the previous. ivermectin is a, it was uh, the one that I've seen was in a tube, and you like you know I guess you put it in the food or whatever. Um, but it's a horse dewormer, ho horse and cow, mm. and nobody's the size of a horse and cow. So are you ODing on this she or what? I don't know, but I know that, that, that hopefully you still have some toilet paper from 2020 because you, you needed it. <laughs>
damn sure needed it. Woo! Um, one of the best uh, arguments that I saw for people not taking the vaccine, for people and for against anti-vaxxers, um, I saw this on TV today where this guy, he was a scientist or whatever, and this guy calls it to his show. And he's like, uh, I'm not taking the vaccine because I have nat- my natural, but my body's natural immunity um, will, will, will ward it off and I'm a healthy person and I eat right and I exercise so my body's natural immunity will take this off. So the doctor says, like, he goes, let me ask you a question. So the guy's like, okay, he's like, would you sleep with someone who had gonorrhea or syphilis without a condom. And the guy's like, it's not the same thing. He's like, answer the question. Would you sleep with someone with gonorrhea or syphilis, which are contagious diseases without protection? And the guy said, no. He said, why not? Why not let your body's natural immunity fight those things off? The guy had nothing to say. So you won't sleep with somebody without a condom because you're afraid of getting a contagious virus. But you don't want to get a vaccine. Like it just, I'm like, these people don't have an argument. Um, If you don't want to take it, don't take it. Just, just don't. Um, This, this is one year where you can see the idiocy of Americans in general across every demographic. We are I mean, I'm, if you don't want to get it, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Just wear your mask, though. They want to do that. Don't want to get it and don't want to wear a mask because wearing a mask is an infringement on your American rights, your rights as American, and um, you can't be social with a mask on. These are arguments that I've heard. Uh, you can't be social, uh, you know. Um, we are less human because we're wearing a mask because we can't see each other's faces. First of all, half of you motherfuckers is ugly. Um, Who are you going to say that? You good from here up. From here to here? <laughs> from here to here, you good. But boy, when we get down look here, at that I love it. But when you get down here and you put all this together, the math ain't math then. And then it's muffling your your children. It it, is muffling your children. They can't breathe. They cannot wear a mask. I saw a preschool class and all the kids had a mask on and none of them had a problem with it. These are the same small students who put peas in their nose. Even my nephew, he's who's four, who knows, (laughs) you know, he knows coronavirus because he's been hearing it since for the past since he was two right he knows that you have to wear a mask to not get coronavirus <laughs> you're not muffling kids hell you don't even want to hear from your kids anyway these are the same people who lock their kids in the basement or in their bedrooms and don't listen to them or who plug them in front of the tv and don't listen to them for hours so are you talking about muffling your kids you want to hear them these kids stuff erasers in peas up their nose. They'll be fine. <laughs> They'll be fine. <laughs> kids, listen, kids are like min- miniature typhoid Marys. They carry every virus and disease known to man. They bring everything home because they touch stuff. They touch other people's stuff. They touch their noses. And then they're like, oh, I got boogers. I want to see. And they touch the other kid. And other kids like, oh, let me see. And they both get... If you put the mask on your kids, you're actually protecting yourself because they carry their immune systems are so sensitive that they pick up everything and they bring it in positive at your house. And they haven't been at school for a whole year. So they haven't been their immune systems aren't used to those viruses. Just just think about uh, if you went a lot to of the school part, seems overcrowded. Um, my daughter's school is definitely overcrowded. Um, and I don't know if y'all saw the viral video of um, Duncanville. They couldn't even walk in in the to get to classes it, because they were overpopulated by like three or four hundred kids. Because what they've done is a lot of enrollment, which is crazy that they have overcrowded schools, but the enrollment is down. Right. Um, 
I saw an article, they were talking about the, the, the largest school districts like Los Angeles, New York school district and another one um, to where they, they're down tens of thousands of students. So what, they, what they're doing is closing certain schools. And so they're busing kids to, into you know, certain schools. And so now you have overcrowding, but low enrollment. So a lot of kids aren't even going to school. Well, I know and, uh, what Garland did is they opened up um, pretty much like no matter where you stay, it doesn't matter where you stay. If you live in Plano, if you want to go to Garland, you can use your Plano address and come to Garland High School. So what that did is open the door for kids to, that they need to be in the district. They could have stayed in their own district, that would which probably would have helped enrollment. Mm -hmm. um, but just my <laughs> But my daughter's like, mom, it's like really bad and people don't wear their masks, which at one point Garland ISD was the highest uh, school district of carrying the coronavirus because the kid, it's just too many kids. It's too many. So uh, the reason I brought that is because you said how they can transfer things. And it's like that for a minute, like their immune systems are just. They're trash. Trash. That was my word, but I don't want to say it. No, but trash. Look. Listen, I'll say My you. nephew is the out trash. until January 14th. He's been out of school for at least, what, maybe three days already. They said they don't want them kids to come back till after Christmas, after New Year's. They're giving them two weeks because they had so many kids that were coming down with COVID. Well, Dallas is up by 13%. I'm sure the the um, oh, it's getting pretty bad again. The the staff mm -hmm. has it too. I'm pretty sure. When you think about speaking of staff. You think about all the the companies who are losing employees because they're mandating that you get vaccinated. People, I, the company that I work for, they gave people options. They were like, "Look, you either get vaccinated or you have to leave." We we're a contractor for a large. Um, media conglomerate um, and so we work in their building and even with them we have to follow what their employees follow so they said you either get vaccinated or you're out period you can retire or whatever you want to do but you will no longer work for this company if you are not vaccinated you cannot come into any of our buildings as an employee and so as contractors we have to follow that mm -hmm. so there were so many people who were like my co-workers were like, no, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to get vaccinated. Are you so comfortable? Is your bank account so well padded that you could just quit your job? Mind so you, that co-worker was the one that was a super spreader. <laughs> super spreader. And then speaking with some of the employees of the company, the vendor company that we work for, a lot of them went into early retirement or just quit and they were like blaming the company. But here's the thing. You have to protect the interest of the company, which includes all the other employees, because we just can't have you as an individual coming in here sick with your typhoid blanket on and infecting everybody because you want to exercise your rights. That's fine. Exercise your rights at home. Um, I just uh, applied for, interviewed for two new jobs. And part of the interview questions are, um, you know, have you been vaccinated? Is that a problem for you? You being vaccinated, is that a problem? No, it's not. No. I was just so, talking to my mom the other day and I had, you know, I have hmm. a, compromised immune system due to my lupus and having a kid, uh, two kidney transplant. How many kidney transplants have I had? Two? Two. It so... Three. Is the third one? Not two. The second. Yes, sir. So I have to get it because I know I got pneumonia right during the beginning of the of 2020. And I almost died. Like um, my, I was at 10 plus my oxygen was on 10 plus. I couldn't talk. I was, 
I was like, if I get COVID and pneumonia again, I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. So I got my shot. My first shot only covered me 50 something percent where everybody else was covered 90. So, um, and that's with the first, the first two shots. So then I got my booster, which pushed me up to 75. And my mama saying, well, you're probably going to have to go get another shot. And I'm like, I need them to figure out something because I can't be getting shot. I mean, I don't, I mean, shots don't bother me, but the sore arm and the after effects do bother me. And I'm like, they need to go back in the lab and do something. So folks ain't got to get 85 shots out here. But let me ask you a question. Is the inconvenience worth your life? I mean, I'm going to get them. But I need y'all to be in the lab figuring out so I don't have to. I get think anything. things are, I think the, the virus is yeah. mutating so quickly and so many people are getting it in different places and in, in, in different with different uh, side effects that they don't have time. The, we, time is not on our side when it comes to this. Um, so they're just doing what they can for right now. They are Mickey Mouse and the hell out of, this, uh, out of these uh, vaccines. Like, let's just do this for now. You know, it's kind of like when you ask your mama, can you, uh, can you go somewhere? And she's like, wait and see. It's just wait and see. We just got to wait and see. We're going to get this and we're going to wait and see what happens. We're going to get this and wait and see what happens. And I mean, and that's just the nature of the beast that we're dealing with right now. Um, I really hate it. Cause I mean, I, I mean, I'm not a fan. I don't need nothing to make me sick. I'm not a fan, but I'm going to, I'm going to take it. But I'm going to take it. I'm already, I'm already in you know, behind the margin. I think now I'm up to 75%, but I got that in June. Was it June? The booster, yeah. No, it was early. So I know it's time for me to get a fourth. They just ain't said get a fourth yet. Well, we'll see. All right. So what we're going to do is actually turn this to something funny. We actually turn, turn this to a story that, um, that we saw on where Instagram on our favorite channel on Instagram, um, the neighborhood talk because we love the neighborhood talk. Let's see here. I just want to say that uh, Jackie's skin is looking fab today. Your skin is good. I mean, you just glowing. Period. Before we started recording, I said, I see you. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes. So I don't know what kind of happy, like, what you know, kind of happy you experiencing right now, what kind of peace, but keep that going. Keep that. That's what it is. Keep that. Peace. I'm sorry. It is okay. yeah. Sorry, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> it's okay. Hey, um, yeah, it's peace. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, I, I I seen that. I, I peeped that out. I was like, and, and a joy that I haven't felt in years. Um, and it's crazy because, you know, for a long time, uh, remember you were you were just discussing how uh, 2021 has mentally been draining for people. Well, 2021 saved me. So I, you know, it it saved me as a person because prior I was drained. So 2021 made me come out. I'm a different person. Um, I'm so sleepy, y'all. So I'm trying. I'm tired. Okay. I do nails full time. I work full time. Um, and I'm an amazing mom. And I'm a, a, a single lady now who is doing the best she can, trying to just refine herself after a long, long time. So when they compliment me, they don't even realize it really makes me feel very, very good about myself. So thank you. You are very welcome. For well, all of that, all your rediscovery is showing up on your face and it looks good on you. All right. So yes, this yes. is a funny story. Again, we found this on Instagram at our favorite source of information. Yeah, on I love the neighborhood talk. The neighborhood talk because the neighborhood talk got everything. Celebrity news to this story. This is the headline for this story. Monkeys in an Indian village have killed 250 dogs by dragging them to the top of buildings and dropping them out of revenge 
after a pup killed one of their kids, one of their infants. These monkeys in this village are a whole ass mafia. Y'all hear me? They are kidnapping dogs in the village. Dragging their ass up to the top of the bed and dropping their asses off. Like, you got one of ours? We take it all of y'all out. They said they can't find no dogs. <laughs> they can't find no dogs. The police can't help. Uh, Holy shit. They gotta be careful. All because, they they, all because that dog off. took that one baby monkey. It ain't <laughs> So I don't know. You can't even try to com combat the, you know, folks with the monkeys because then all your children going to end up coming up missing. <laughs> 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 Who's that, Randy? They're chasing kids. The monkeys are. This is what I think. Why don't y'all just pack up your village and move? Yeah, just move. Because this is some Planet of the Apes type shit. Pick up y'all village and just go. And just go. And just go. Because if they ain't not what they going to start using. And if the people try to come and intervene, they going to be out of town. Baby. And what was that planning meeting like? The, the monkey meeting? Yeah. <laughs> what was the planning meeting? <laughs> Who said what and then how did everybody else be agreeing? Like, yeah. Somebody, somebody they had, a, uncle. they had guests, they had the guest speaker season coming there and tell them that they ain't gotta put up with that no more. They ain't gotta do it. Guest speaker season for Planet A. The humans brought the dogs. The humans brought the dogs, then they don't want to feed the dogs because the dogs are a nuisance. So the dog came and got one of our babies because the dog was hungry. Because the humans don't want to feed them no more. So it's really the human's fault, but we're gonna we gonna solve this problem. We can get rid of all these goddamn dogs. The pets. I just everything. I just kept imagining them literally walking and just being like, just just this is oh some Mufasa and Scar Lion King type shit. <laughs> the fact that they coordinated this, they yes. coordinated the coordination. Monkeys are intelligent. So they did have a meeting. When you said a meeting, they actually, I know that they had a meeting. They were all, all around, all around. And the leaders of their troop was like, they probably drew something in the sand that symbolized dog. <laughs> they brought the grieving mother in. The grieving mother came through. <laughs> <laughs> they, they gave tribute to her. They, they didn't. They didn't gather figs and dates and everything and dropped them off and put them, put them, you know, right at, you know, the hem of her garment, you know? After the fume. Yeah, it happened after the fume. Well, they went up and gathered what was left of the baby. <laughs> you know, because, you know, that they didn't let the dogs eat that baby because, you know, they, they, got, they got them dogs before that. So they, you know, after the fume, they didn't got little dates and figs and a little couple little leaves and flowers and lay them out, you know, the hem of her garment. And she sat there as the grieving mother for the repass. Uh huh. And they held a press conference, and she said that she wished this hadn't happened, and it should not happen to anybody else's child. This does not have to happen. And the, we're not losing no more of our babies. We ain't losing no more of our babies. And the, the troop leader said, we are going to take care of this. You don't have to worry about it. But then there were some thugs in the back. <laughs> they were the, un the uncle's uh, friends, because you know it's always the uncle's friends. The uncle's friends in the back. It was like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We don't know which dog it was, so we're going to get all of them. The pastor tried to calm him down, but there was just so much emotion. And she got the she got the way. <laughs> yeah. so much emotion in the room. The pastor couldn't control it. Mm -hmm. My ears hurt. She got the wailing and moaning, and they said no. <laughs> mm -mm. And um, somewhere in the back, the Indian version of "Soon Will Be Done" was playing. <laughs> in the back, troubles of the world. Yeah, oh, Lord. yes. And they said, well, <laughs> they was weeping and wailing. We ain't gonna do this no more. Oh man, 
And well, I'll look. well, so in the article it says not a single pup is left in Laval. Damn. Ah, damn. They have eradicated the whole damn village. Of they, were, they, were, they were dropping ba uh, puppies, grown dogs. No, yes. Everybody. It, can everybody. Then, it says that the monkeys set upon dogs as soon as they see them before taking them up to a high place, usually the top of a building or a tree, and dropping them to their death. My name. Execution style. Can you imagine the dog? Because you know we dogs be like struggling and 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 hollering. That's what I'm thinking. Thing. Like, do you know what kind of strength? You know what kind of strength they got me hanging them. And you know the they, tree. You know they dragged them by the tail because that's what monkeys do. Monkeys yeah. drag their babies by their tail. So you know they had that dog. They <laughs> the dog's tail around their hand like this and drug the shit out of him. They was at the house warming up with some kind of gangster rap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Probably some Tupac or something. Right. No, they were no, they were jamming. They were jamming. Uh, 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 Ain't that But the mother angels. That's what they was jamming because if you know that yeah. song, then you know it's literally about you know we we ride for everybody and mm -hmm. everybody everybody can die. Yeah, so, that's just some some rough riders and DMX on the way up. Yeah, yeah, on the way on up there. Oh, up the tree. was the main one. The the mama? Yeah, she probably was like, I need to be in on that, the first couple of them. Do you think her yeah, name she, was Keisha or Linda? Was it one of them? No. Linda, Linda was the one standing at the bottom do, giving them the sign like this. Yeah, just and yeah. they just drop this stand there, get the next one. I can, you know what? I if this is morbid, and the PETA people, animal lovers, are gonna just hate me. Right. And I love dogs, but I would have loved to witness a monkey dragging a dog up a damn building. I, this is bullshit. Up a tree, up a tree, like a leopard. You know they're gonna make it for it to go to the death. They going up, 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 and to be like. And the fact that they knew how far up to go, and you know they were celebrating yeah. afterwards. Yes. Better believe it. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Better believe oh, it. I wonder in the future if they're gonna keep, like, if if dogs are reintroduced to that village, how long they're gonna keep this vendetta against dogs? They gotta let a whole couple generations go. <laughs> That's gonna be very interesting. Ain't gonna be no more dogs. The dogs yeah, already hurt unless the dogs done had a meeting. The dogs can't do nothing. I mean, all the monkeys are quicker than them. I don't know. I think the next the next town over where all the the extended families are, you know, like some cousins that might have moved away, just aunties, some uncles. Just move to the city. Just move they, might the city. they might coordinate an attack. When when the monkeys ain't ready, because the monkeys think they done. Yeah, this oh, is man, this no. is gonna go on for a couple generations. Yeah, it's gonna be a minute. Oh my it's gonna god, gonna be a minute. It's gonna be like um that tribe, you know, the tribe where can't nobody go there, they just kill them. The it's gonna be like island. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's gonna be like that. Yeah, when you come there, you just die. No, it don't matter. It's gonna die. Island. I wish there was a picture of the village. <gasps> Most the families that Here's was a picture of a monkey got the got the dog. You put put it in the group chat. I'm probably you know you somebody done filmed it. I'm gonna send y'all this. Far. Hold on, let me let me find y'all. I'm gonna send this to both of y'all. They would have to like. They would have to like. I don't know what they would have to do to the monkeys. There's nothing you can do because you can't catch them. They, they yeah, said the police the, were trying to catch them. Yeah, the police said that mm, it's, it's they yeah, said I can't see, do that. You see how that monkey got that dog gathered up under his chest? He yeah. gone. He gone. Let me see. Is yes, it just one yeah. monkey? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a monkey. It's got the pup like this. You hear him, him mid motion. It looked like he's running. 
And, and, and it looks like he's going down. Up. And if you don't know any better based on the ankle, it looks like he is going higher. So yeah, he's going he's up definitely, the stairs. I, well, I think the people, the folks, the dogs done killed the, uh, oh, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Earl, who killed, uh, baby Jameson, the monkey. And they are, they killed him because he brought, you know, he done brought all that she onto all them families. So they got rid of him. That's one monkey. I mean, that's one dog the monkeys didn't have to worry about. Well, they, they got rid of all 250 dogs. That's a lot of man. That's a man. <laughs> I mean, uh, two hundred and fifty. I wonder how many days it took. This is a massacre, and I think people need to watch their kids because now the monkeys are on a, the owner's revenge kick, and they like we killing everything. So watch the little babies because they will. Yeah, they said small, small children yeah. are in danger. Don't take them. So that's a. We wanted to kind of break that up and talk about that. Are there? um, Okay, so let's just quickly before you know before we end and be safe, please give the benediction. Yes, please be safe. I'm sorry. What was he? I said, please be safe. I said before we uh, before we end and give a benediction. Jackie, what was your favorite story that we covered this year? Um. I don't know. I don't know. That's a hard. You can't. I'm a leader. You can't give me those type of questions. I, I got mine. I mean, Good very word. indecisive. Okay, go, Brian. My favorite was the nipple belt and the penis and field onions. It was in my top two. <laughs> it was in my and top two. Chain. Was the was the nipple belt? I was like, okay, that was the story with Ed Gein and Albert Fish. Yes. That is my favorite. It was amazing. I watched it the other day and was laughing just as hard as I was the day that you know. <laughs> you only really like that because those are the ones I got in trouble with. Um, you ain't getting no damn trouble. The, the potential for me to get in trouble when I say stuff like the nipple belt and the field onions is always there. Um, I remember I got, I did get in trouble for the story with the guy who killed his neighbor in Oklahoma. And then he served, a, he, 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 um, served her with some potatoes and then and I said family. he should have made some rice with a little, with a little gravy. Got, you got trouble for that? Yeah. You did? We all did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They said that, they said um, that. Word. No, man, I get in trouble for laughing at everything too much, so. Yeah. It wasn't phone. funny, and we should be making light of it. Yeah. No, I, I'm, something. Well, just, laughing at the fact that they're dead. I'm laughing because I'm like, this is crazy. Yeah, some things just lend themselves to a little comedy. That's why. And I, I wouldn't have fixed potatoes. I would have fixed rice with a little gravy. That's because you always want gravy. But yeah, I'm gravy? just saying that's what I would have picked. You love gravy, man. Brandy was in the kind of gravy. G- gravy girl. Brady right. was in the hospital for a long time, a couple years. You know, ago. you know, down to, you know, it's cream gravy and it's brown gravy. Cream gravy don't count. It, gravy is gravy for me. Cream gravy don't count. That's white gravy, right? No. My, cream gravy is almost like, uh, what my grandma call it? Heavyweight. Oh, the 30 yeah. weight gravy? Yeah, my grandma call it heavyweight. Oh. I, white gravy don't no, count. thirty. It don't matter. I mean, they they still same thing. Yeah, I don't like white gravy. gravy. She don't like white gravy because it's I white. That, I just think that's just liquid flour. I don't like white gravy. I don't like white gravy. That's nasty. Like that. It's just white and lumpy, like it's uncooked. Mm-mm. It don't got to be lumpy. I need my gravy the same color as my fingers. Well, I just like gravy. And so I would have definitely had rice and gravy. Rice and gravy. It would have been a little chewy though. Why? Oh, it's a muscle. With the penis? No, he cut the heart. Oh yeah, I'm gonna say. Can we have penis and gravy? <laughs> 
the penis probably was a little, it was a little, uh, chewy. little chewy too. Like you can't over it, definitely. Like a, like a, uh, was it a, um, Rocky Mountain, was it Mountain Oysters? You know, just bull No, I think it's kind of like the skin off when you eat a pig foot. <laughs> the <laughs> penis? Yeah. It's like regular sausage with yeah, a casing. Yeah, that's a thin. It's the, Earl Campbell casing. You know Earl Campbell cases. You are dumb. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely has a case. Mm -mm. Already cased. Mm -mm. But I'm talking about now I can't eat Oral Campbell's no more. <laughs> he ain't having breakfast around here no more. Um, no, I'm talking about like it. once it's cooked, it's gonna be chewy. Like, That's you why you put it in a food processor, oh, mix it a little bit of uh, mm. a little bit of cracker, you know, or mm -hmm. bread from like onion it together, <laughs> like some onion, onion. Some, some pepper, bell pepper, and then you stuff it back in. Well, I mean. Albert Fish didn't have no food pro pro processor. That's why I think he was cooking it with the field onions. He was just out there in the middle of, you know, just kind of frying it up a little bit, a little pan fry, a little pan sear. Well, maybe he just cut it real fine. Smashed the hell out of it. Mm. And then rolled, rolled the veggies and stuff in like a great... Great leaves. Yeah. You know, I was going to say something that I think I probably would have went a little too far with. Hey. So, you know, back then, they weren't circumcising. Oh, you had extra skin on it. So, it's more skin on there. So, it's definitely top on the cube. Like right you got to tie the, top, tie the top of the casing. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, it's like a string of peanut sausage. I think, yeah, kinda, gonna, I think he ate it. That thing, just spin that thing to close it off. I think he ate it raw. I don't think he ate it raw. I think he took it in there. He at least pan fried it. <laughs> a little bit. Get, a little. <laughs> Get the skin a little a little you crisp. Think, you think Albert <laughs> no, you think Ed Dean wore that nipple belt? Yes. You think he put it on? Yes. With his pants? Yes. You, you bet not belt, that's what he made it for. How Probably you walking around the house and in the field. And he probably had it on with you know with a shirt pulled over a little bit. You know, he kind of bloused it out, like you know, bloused it out. Yeah. But how did he get the nipples through the loop though? Nipples aren't, I mean, he didn't have no big old honking nipples on there. He didn't have no meatball nipples on it. Yeah. Mm. He could have used them as suspenders too. He could have. He just used them as a notch and hold them up. Could have. Hmm. Or yeah, that was a pretty good. interesting story. Egg in the apple fish. Because that was just nasty. That was my favorite show. My favorite show. <laughs> What's your favorite, Brandy? Um, I'm going to look. I'm going to look right now. Huh? It was. That was one of my favorites. Um Fish. Let me see. You messing with that dog, Jackie? Yes, he's doing. <laughs> That's why I had to. I see your arm going. <clears throat> you got some force behind that he's snap. Just, see your foot. Look, look. You just... Cash, we're going to send your ass to India. He heard the story. That's why he done came up there. Quit playing. I'm going to take your ass to the Fort Worth Zoo. They got cousins. They talk. His daddy left to get your plate. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
he ain't gonna animals, sit down now. You done give him, you done scruffed him. Yeah, animals are allowed on the show. Um, <laughs> what's your favorite brand? I think abducting in plain sight was one of my favorites when we talked yes, about the show. That was a good one too. That was a good one. Um, because it just, I, I am still just outdone by abduction in plain sight. And let me tell you, if you have never seen that documentary, please, please watch it. For all that is worth in this universe, please watch that documentary. It is worth the two hours out of your day and out of your time to watch. Actually, it's probably going to take you about three days to watch it. Because, because you're going to keep stopping and looking around. Did, like, in, did, did y'all hear this? See this? In there. Yeah, you're going to watch it. If you, it's going to take you a little while to watch it. Definitely that. Definitely that. Um. Oh, who else did we talk? We talk about Jason. What was this man's name? Jason. Uh, Jason Collier. Remember that was the police officer. That was a good one. <clears throat> that was a good Collier. one. Jason and his Collier was good. Um, I can't remember his wife's name, but I'm girl. I'm still rooting for. Was him. it Nancy? Yeah. Was the wife named Nancy? Yeah, I don't know. Well, but or she, did we call her Nancy? Because it was Nancy being used, but I don't remember if it was her name or we called her. No, Nancy daughter. was the friend, the the friend's wife. Oh, I think it was. I think it was Nancy. We'll no, to that show and find out. Um, yeah, the one that was making the nasty food down to the uh, street fair, women's auxiliary. Oh yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Um. We also talked about the Gorilla Blue Lady this year. And she's still in the news. She's still in the news. And she's still doing whatever it takes to, to, to stay relevant. That hair she showed looked like some fake hair. It didn't look like human it, hair. It, it, looked was, like it was crochet it was hair. hair. It was. It looked like crochet hair. Because everybody knows if you perm your hair and you don't comb, comb it out and it has new growth in there, when you perm it, the new growth is still going to be sitting there. So when you comb it out, the new growth will come out. So she can stop that. She was a mess. Okay. Then she had then she had the situation with her at the daycare. You know, that home daycare with the girl that was recording her and mm -hmm. saying she wasn't doing her job and recording her in bed sleep while the kids were running around crazy. I mean, then she got that hair transplant. Mm -hmm. It didn't help. It didn't help. Um, but then her back was off. Ain't worth the ain't the, the, the damn. A damn. Wow. Okay, so let's see here. The one show that everyone seemed to like that got the most views last year was Nico Jenkins. Mm -hmm. I still look on our Instagram page and people are still that was a little They're still talking about it. People are still talking about Nico Jenkins. I wonder what it was about Nico. Just a scary exterior. I think it was his exterior. Know. And it's also, um, it's scary, but it's intriguing. Because without, and to be, let's be honest, if he wasn't in prison and he was out and about, you'd look twice at that dude. Mm -hmm. You would look twice at that dude. And so it's kind of like you want to look twice, but it's scary because you don't want to invite that type of energy into your life. But then again, yeah, you kind of do. Um, I think the... Um, Let's see. Let me ask you guys this, and then we'll go ahead and uh, wrap up. During this past year, I know we had our favorite stories, but what's a story that we did that, like, really touched you or, like, really you didn't know about or just kind of really stayed with you the whole time? For me, it was the one about... Um... I can't remember. I know they're in the the group's name. I just can't think of it. The one that had got bombed. Move, move, and that's thing. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, as we were all emotional on the the episode. I mean, it was just it was definitely very touching. Yeah, definitely. I have that. to say that that was um uh, that was the one that said. Now we did the exonerated five. And that was that was horrible. Um, to know that what was done to them. Cash, we hear you. Um, but talking about um, the people from that were bombed twice, 
um, in Philadelphia. That was, um, what is the name? What was the name of doc, the documentary? Um, the one about the parents? Yes. Michael Africa Jr. Um, talked about this. Who, who called, followed or, us? He yes. followed us afterwards uh, and has liked years, a couple of videos in post. Yes. Uh, 40 Years a Prisoner was the documentary uh, produced by HBO. Um, I think those were the first uh, the first episode of 2021. We did that. We talked about the, um, yeah, that yeah, one. We, that we one. Was, I, mean, I done broke down on the camera. Yeah. Yeah. It was. And we did it in two different episodes because there were two different bombings and we focused on two different parts and we talked about the group itself and what led to the bombings and, you know, what the group comprised of. But then there was this, this 40 something year love story between Michael Beautiful. Africa and, and Brenda, or was it Deborah? I'm sorry. And then also their son, like they're in two different prisons for 40 years, these two people, um, and then they get out. They finally managed to get them out. And if y'all haven't seen this documentary, I'm about to cry because Jesus. Because I said, mm -hmm. that I don't think I had that type of capability to love somebody like that. And they get out after 40 years. And these Nothing two changed. people managed not to be, not to hold a enough resentment to stay away from me. They they got married after 40 years apart. They got married. Like they were still, oh my God, like, oh, this this divine black love. And oh, it was just, whew, just thinking about it. Just like, I still follow Michael Africa Jr. And, you know, he'll have updates about his parents and stuff on there. And I still look at them like, his father cut his hair, so his father has short hair now. Um, but it's just, yeah, that was, those are the best episodes. And it's crazy because um, I look at every, because on YouTube, you know, your algorithm comes up, and I'll look at comments on some of the documentaries that we watched about the move, you know, about the move bombings, and people are like, I didn't know about this. How come they didn't teach us this? This happened in 1985. Like, how come we didn't know? They did so much so that you did not know. And then even after that, after 40 Years a Prisoner came out, a couple months later, there was uh, from two major, two major universities, I think one was Yale, and I forget the other university, where they kept the bodies, the remains of children. Yep. The anthropology department kept the remains. They stole the remains from the corner and kept them in a drawer so that they can study them in the anthropology department. Like, that, that, is, that is some 19th century Sarah apartment kind of shit. Yep. But this happened in our lifetime that they had these babies in a drawer studying them in an anthropology class. So they were fighting to get the remains back. I'm not sure if they were successful in that just yet, but that was the best story, I think, of 2021. That That's was the, the best, best story. story. That's one stable one. Yeah. All right. Um, Did the quick scan. I don't think nobody yeah. pushed it. Um, so next year, um, we, again, we welcome all suggestions from audience anybody um you know if you have any true crime friends or whatever uh let us know what you guys want to hear and the thing about true crime is that you know there are a lot of shows a lot of podcasts you know a lot of youtube shows um popular crimes are popular crimes so you're going to hear the same stories across different platforms. Right. Over and over. <clears throat> Period. One thing that I've, we've tried not to do is do the same stories as the other, um, you know, content creators. Sometimes you can't help but to overlap. We did the story about um, McCallum, the lady who, um, who killed the dog, the white doctor in Florida. And then right after that, right after we, after we put that out, um, there was a podcast called Sisters Who Kill who did the same story. But it's a different perspective. 
Um, so it might be the same information, but the perspective is different. So we will do a show if it's been done before. We can't help it because it's a different mm. perspective. We're talking yeah. about different things. So but Listen, yeah. Ed, Gein, Ed Gein has been done millions for, of times. For, for years and but years. But I don't think anybody was talking about that nipple bill. <laughs> I think we had the market pretty much sold up. Well, oh, I, that's bad to use. I can't sold use up. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, we're conversational. Yeah. So, yeah, that's one thing we are. We are. Uh, this is completely unscripted. We know what we're going to talk about. We just don't know what we're going to say. Or how um, we're going to say. It. Yeah. Or just how don't know say what it. I'm going to say. Definitely don't know what me that is going to say. Uh, just know that I'm going to laugh. Yes, and I'm going to give this face. And we're going to laugh. <laughs> Me and me and BW are going to show out, and yeah. we're going to keep laughing. And we're going Jackie going to come with the photos. Yes, yeah. So Jack, Jackie is, and then and then her sister is our fact checker. So we uh, we got Jenny being our fact checker uh, when we can. So you know, again, send us your suggestions. What do you guys want to hear? What do you guys want to see? What do you want us to talk about? Um, and we'll do our best to get to it. But we will be talking about um, a new story that came out about a guy who. Um, had the buy killed four people and was carting them around in the sh Target shopping cart. So we'll talk about that um, early in 2022. Um, there's mm -hmm. stories about a, um, an ambush that killed two police officers back in the 60s um, mm -hmm. in Riverside, California. We'll talk about that. And I'm still obsessed with Kanika Jenkins. Well, there are some new, there was some Brandy actually new information. Brandy already knows whenever she sees a TikTok, she better send it to me because I'm obsessed with that story. Yes, there are some new information about Kanika Jenkins. There's also um, some new uh, information about Kendrick Johnson from Atlanta. Yes. Talking about, then we'll talk about that. Um, there was, I'll give, try to give, find some updates. There was a story a couple years ago in Grand Prairie, Texas, where a man went into a workplace and killed his coworker. Um, I don't, I, Jackie, I don't know if you remember that it happened maybe five, six years ago. We'll talk about that. So there's a couple things that we have going on. And then as the year progresses, you know, yeah. we'll pick up some stuff. So if you have some cold cases, um, little things we want to talk about, case. we'll talk about them. And of course, we will be watching. You don't it trust us with a cold case? Who's going to trust us with a cold case? Well, we talk about eating penis. Mm -hmm. I cut up a penis and ate it. What if what the text was? Mm -hmm. But maybe um, with a cold case, well, wow, you said <laughs> texture. Uh, maybe with a cold case, it's a different perspective because we're, we're all suspicious as hell. And so, that's true. Granny did it. We don't know. Yeah. Man, you know, why, well, you, what we going to do is find every, and I do mean every possible scenario that could have mm -hmm. definitely happened that you wouldn't even consider. I know BW this year definitely did a lot of that. And I'd be like, you know what? That makes sense. Right. And what she thing, thinks so far beyond what you can, when you can grasp of it. And I used to be like, God, damn, I didn't mm -hmm. even think of that. Right. Like, when we were talking about right. the, um, the, uh, the guys who uh, hate over the internet and, and hate women, um, the opposite of that, because Brandy asked, well, are there any female, ser what serial killers kind of have that trait? What female serial killers have that trait? Well, the opposite of that is called misandry, which is women hating men. So the opposite of misogyny is misandry. So we will talk about misandry just to be fair, because we don't want the Kevin Samuels out there, because we know y'all like to tussle with the Kevin Samuels guys. Um, we'll talk about misandry um, and women Ooh, who good. actively hate men, what women uh, criminals have that Ooh. trait. So we'll talk about that, too. You know, men swore we hate them. Yeah, we don't hate y'all. Y'all y'all useful. This is stupid. Yeah, y'all useful. Stupid. Yeah, y'all just dumb as hell. You're dumb. All right, so mm -hmm. we will wrap up for 2021. We will see you guys back here in a couple weeks. Um, in the meantime, happy holidays, happy Kwanzaa. Um, happy Christmas, Monica. Right, however, you celebrate, happy holidays and happy new year. And uh, we'll see y'all in 2022. Hopefully, y'all keep my y'all keep my neck in prayer. I, I had a horrible, <laughs> a horrible 
a six hour trip turned into a 24 hour trip when a, a plane <laughs> had backed up my neck. I'm looking all suspicious and my back is all straight looking at people like this. <laughs> it's I This side is fine, but this side, I got to move my whole body. That's suspicious. I can't even every, suspicious. you know, and I'm not trying every in the every episode next year. Brady, you gonna let us know we need to pray for. Them. I will tell you every episode because it's amazing. Some of the stuff is definitely worth the prayer. But when you just said pray for my neck because of the of a flight, that was good. Yes, and sir. I'm suspicious turning talking to people like this. Like <laughs> uh, I'm too suspicious. Oh, All your prayer request to info at blackcoffeecrime.com. Worthy. And like, who are you going to trust somebody who look at you like this? We will definitely put you on the prayer list during the uh, during the show so that we can get the world to pray for your suspicious neck and all the other ailments. Because if you're ailing... Trustworthy and suspicious neck. Yes, yes, yes. So, um, again, blessings to all of you. Thank you guys for joining us this entire year. Uh, we're going to end this year on episode 66 and then pick up at episode 67 at the beginning of of 2022 so thank yes. you guys be safe be kind and no i don't even say that i said be safe be blessed enjoy the second cup make it be All kind right. please. i mean be 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 a... i have new hymns it? for you too new whole new have music you coffee? have you already had, said, had a second cup of coffee no i've only had one cup of coffee today have you already said it no your share was kind no, I just what I said. It was be blessed. Be safe, be blessed, and enjoy the second cup. I, I, I just let y'all know I'm going to be bringing that fire music on the music minister. The <laughs> I'm going to be bringing that fire. That's music. That's going to be awesome. AMB. AMB, baby. For the most love. Mm -hmm. him. Those are going to be off camera. The only hymn is by y'all. I can't. We can't yeah. even it's all right because y'all still messing up. Thank you, Jesus.